Hi, I'm Katie from Blackberry Hill House, and this is the 2024 Baking Challenge. I have selected one recipe to bake a week. This year, I've selected all of the recipes from one of my favorite companies, King Arthur Baking. Now, these are recipes that I have never tried before, so it's all brand new. And I hope that you're going to join along with me. We're going to have one recipe every week for the entire year of 2024. We're going to be baking on a budget. We're going to cut some corners and we're probably going to alter some recipes, but hopefully every week you'll have a new tasty treat to enjoy with your friends and family. I hope you'll follow along and let's get cooking. Welcome to week one. This is January, the first week of January. And I've selected the Cinnamon Star Bread from King Arthur Baking Company. I've put the link below. You'll also find links for different things that I've used because we're baking on a budget. So I live in a rural area. The grocery store doesn't always carry some things. So I've had to order a lot of things from Amazon, like this giant bottle of vanilla. Because we don't measure vanilla with a measuring spoon. We measure with our hearts when it comes to vanilla and garlic and sugar. Um, <laughs> so cinnamon star bread. It's this beautiful bread and it's kind of a sweet bread. It's got the cinnamon sugar uh, layers, which we're not going to do. I'm not going to do. You can do the cinnamon sugar layers. I'm the only one in my household that likes cinnamon sugar. So instead, I'm going to try a substitute and I'm going to try to substitute Nutella instead and fingers crossed it's probably going to be messy and ooey and gooey but if it works out the way it does in my brain it's still going to be really tasty and it's going to look pretty too so let's get into the ingredients that you will need for this recipe now there's two parts to the recipe you've got the dough and then you've got the filling so the dough is going to be two cups of all-purpose flour you're going to need a fourth a cup of potato flakes, like just instant mashed potatoes. Make sure it's not like buttery or garlic or cheesy or anything. It needs to be plain mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes. You're going to need a fourth a cup of powdered milk. What else is there? Um, I'm going to look at the recipe. I'm going to cheat. I'm looking at the recipe here. Uh, four tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature. If you didn't plan ahead, that's okay. Stick it in a bowl, microwave it for 10 seconds at a time until it gets soft. It's not that big of a deal. You're going to need a teaspoon of vanilla or just, you know, again, measure with your heart because that's what we do. Uh, two teaspoons of instant yeast. Now you can get the packet, but I bake enough that I get a big jar of yeast. And this is bread machine yeast, but I'm not going to be mixing in a mixer and letting it rise, I'm cheating, cheating. I'm cutting a corner by using my bread machine. I love my bread machine and anytime I can put dough in it that needs to rise, even if it's something that I have to bake on my own, I'm gonna choose that because it's just easier and I get to walk away. I'm not gonna obsessively check it because my machine gets it right every single time. So you're also gonna need two tablespoons of granulated sugar and a teaspoon of salt. That's for the dough. We'll get into the filling in a little bit in the meantime, let's get started. All right, let's get baking. Now, if you're using a mixer, you're going to want to do your two cups of flour, your um, powdered milk, and your potato flakes, and you're gonna wanna sift those into a bowl. Now, since I am using a bread machine, if you use a bread machine, you know that your wet ingredients go in first. So. Three-fourths of a cup of lukewarm water, along with about two to four tablespoons, and I just eyeballed it. I'm going to add my room temperature four tablespoons of butter to this. I'm splashing everywhere. Okay. Now I'm going to sift my flour. And if you're using um, a bread machine, you still are going to need to do this part, and that's a bummer. But... No, it is what it is. So we're going to have two cups of flour. This is a half a cup measuring spoon, so I'm going to do this four times. Um, but first I'm going to put 
put some of my powdered milk and things in here or all of my powdered milk and some of my potato flakes and then we're just going to get sifting and this part is a real bummer um i hate sifting <laughs> it's time consuming it's hard on the hands but a lot of times that is just part of life i'm going to go ahead and add my other cup of flour in here there we go all right See, and then sometimes my sifter gets a little crazy on me. Um, I have a sifting attachment for my KitchenAid mixer, and I use that a lot whenever I'm making icing or anything that requires sifting. This is a manual. I haven't used this in a long time, and it's a cheap one. So uh, I used to have one with a crank handle. I liked that one a lot. So this is to prevent your dough from having lumps. That's an important thing. Um, I have often, because I've hated sifting in the past, I have often said, you know what, it'll be fine. And then I just don't sift. It's never fine, never. There's always lumps in a, a dough that I've made because I didn't sift. Or icing. I'm really bad about that when I'm making buttercream icing. Okay, these potato flakes are taking a while. You know what? This is where I lose patience and we just dump and cross our fingers. All right. Making a mess. Totally fine. So we have our milk, our butter, our water. Okay. Vanilla. Two teaspoons of vanilla, right? Two, one teaspoon of vanilla. That's not gonna be nearly enough. We're just gonna dump a little bit in the corners. Again, you don't want, that's probably like two tablespoons and I'm okay with that. You don't wanna put your liquid in the center of your dry ingredients. You do not want that. All right, I am gonna measure the yeast and we're doing two teaspoons of yeast. Here is my teaspoon. That goes, you make a, a well in the center of your dry ingredients, and then you just put your, put your yeast right in the middle there. We also want two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Let me grab the sugar container and not step on the cat who thinks that it is her job to sit at my feet and wait for me to drop something. All right. I can always add a little bit more sugar than I probably should, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. And then we also need a teaspoon of table salt. I never measure the salt. I just eyeball it. That's the kind of crazy that I embrace here. Okay. I have everything for the dough. Let me move my bowls out of the way and grab my bread machine. All right. This is the second bread machine that I have had. Actually, technically, it's my third bread machine. Um, this one is a Hamilton Beach, and I think I've had this one the longest. It's held up fantastic. As someone that loves, let me it in, someone that loves fresh baked bread, but doesn't often have the time or patience to bake bread, but I can dump things in this. Uh, I use this all the time. Just gotta get it in here. There we go. There we go. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes my thing is flipped funny. Come on. struggling with this. We're going to have to. Ah, there we go. Okay. Lock it. All right. Check my menu. We are doing a dough. So for this, that is setting number nine. And then we hit start. And that's it. Now I just have to wait for an hour and a half for that dough to be ready. And I'll come back and we'll go over the filling and the rolling out and the assembly and then the baking. And then my favorite part 
trying it and see if it tastes really great, which I think it's going to. Catch you back later. And we're back. Okay, got the dough. It's ready to roll. <laughs> yeah, Scott would have been proud of that one. Okay, flour the surface. I love this thing, by the way, because when I floured surfaces before, it all ended up just being one big mound in the middle. All right, let's turn out our dough. Now, <laughs> my dough seems to be a little sticky. Okay, it's a lot sticky. Um, I noticed this while it was mixing. And um, so I added more flour. And I don't know what the problem is. It's still really sticky. Like I added more flour to this. So we are just, we're going to go with it because... Man, I, I don't know. I don't want to remake this. <laughs> so, woo, okay. More flour. When in doubt, more flour. All right, trying to get it off my hand. So what we want to do is we have to divide this into um, four equal balls of dough. I am terrible at this. This is never anything that I have been good at, so I'm gonna shape it into a log, grab my slicer here, and go in half, half again, half again, and then dust off this excess flour. It says to make rounds. My rounds are not shaping. I do wonder if maybe my yeast was a little old. Considering I can't remember when I bought that bottle, that's probably a safe assumption. We're gonna fight through this because I don't wanna remake it. <laughs> Lazy baking, I don't wanna redo it. If I don't have to redo it, I'm not going to. It smells good, so I'm sure it's gonna taste good. I don't know how it's gonna go with the, uh, adding the Nutella, but We'll see. All right, you're supposed to let these rest for like 15 minutes um, and then and then start rolling it out. 10 inch circles, which I have this mat because distance is not something that I'm good at either. So my 10 inch is right here. This little mat actually came with this rolling pin. And while I love the mat, I'm not a fan of the rolling pin. I like the, the kind that you hold on to and the handles stay put in your hand as opposed to this. But I only used it the one time, so I'm going to try it again. Has it been 15 minutes? No, it has not. Are we going to do this anyways? Yeah. Yeah, we are. That's okay. All right. So circles, not something I'm good at. But let's go. Let's go here. <laughs> I'm wrecking this. There's no circles happening here. Um, this is going to be a little wonky. Okay, it's going to be a lot. You know, maybe we, oh, see, it's breaking now. I may change this whole video and just do the cookie bars instead. Okay, let's, let's try it again. I could use a rolling pin, but I'm not going to exactly. Um, I'm gonna dust my hands in flour here. Okay, little tiny bits at a time. That's what we need. We just need to go gentle Needs to be gentle and roll. <laughs> this is so a fail. How do you roll it in a good circle? I'm not managing it very well. All right, you know what? It's almost a circle. And we're gonna count that as a win. Maybe it's because I didn't let it rest, I don't know. I'm on a time crunch. Okay, 
If you are doing the cinnamon sugar, what you will do at this point is you will go over your dough with um, an egg wash and then you will sprinkle your cinnamon sugar. And then you're gonna set the whole thing off to the side and roll out more. <laughs> That's all it is, it's layering. You're layering your cinnamon sugar, make sure you do your egg wash in between. You're putting it all on a baking sheet, stacked on top of each other, and then we cut and we twist. Um, since I'm doing Nutella, I don't know if I have to do an egg wash or not. The egg wash is supposed to help hold the filling on, but my filling is sticky, so I'm gonna not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply my filling after I move this onto the baking sheet, because then I'm gonna end up covered in chocolate. Um, and then I'll egg wash the top of it before I put it in the oven. So let me get my baking sheet and we'll get this hopefully moved over without ripping it. All right. I love my Nordic wear pants. I think they're fantastic. I just need to get my parchment paper. There we go, parchment paper. Okay. Boy, I hope that fits on here. <laughs> Did not think this through. That's okay. All right, now we gotta move it. Okay, we can do this. It's, it's really, it should just be Katie's Chaos Kitchen because nothing goes to plan. You know what? I bet if I would just kind of roll it over the top of this, That'll help me move it onto my paper um, without ripping it. Okay, it, it didn't rip, but it did lose its shape. Oh boy, this is just fun. And I wanted to start this series off with something flashy. Well, that, congratulations on a job well done. All right, let's, let's start the Nutella process here. I don't know, maybe a, a chocolate ganache would go well also. Maybe I should have melted this, but I have committed at this point and I'm just gonna, yeah. I'm gonna melt it in the microwave to make it a little easier to spread over my very sticky dough. Oh my gosh, this is just... Listen, there will be ups and downs when you're baking. Things are not always gonna go right. Things are not always going to go to plan. And that's okay. It's okay. You just improvise and you move on. All right, a couple seconds in the microwave. Ten seconds. I'm gonna try ten seconds. That should help. Nice and melty. But it's not melting at all. Alright, let's do 30 seconds. What could go wrong? Everything. Everything could go wrong. <laughs> Alright. Woohoo! Let's see. Okay. So it looks like Nutella doesn't really melt all that much. Let's, let's try this. Oh, no, I was wrong, totally melted. It just doesn't move when it melts. Okay. I'm gonna try to spread it on thin. Not missing any areas. Totally gonna miss areas though. Maybe a spatula would have been better. Um, Maybe a, a pastry brush. I don't know. I'm winging it. Let's try. Let's try a spatula. Katie's fail kitchen. 
Oh, you are supposed to leave a fourth of an inch around the outside of your dough so that it doesn't um, get all over the place. This is really messy, but that's okay. Because messy can still taste good and anybody can bake. It may not look like what you were trying. It may not taste like what you were trying. But I'm still having fun and I get to lick the spoon. So I say that's a win. Okay, I, <laughs> I have this piece of dough as covered as it's gonna get. Now, time to roll out the next one. This is stressful. It's not supposed to be stressful though, so we're just gonna take a deep breath, recenter, and go for it. I'm gonna kind of mush it out with my hand first, and then we're gonna get going here. Oh, sticking. Not supposed to stick to this stainless steel, but here we are. Yeah, not loving this rolling pin still. I am. Not loving it at all. Just flower the surface, I guess. Okay. This is actually going a lot better than the last one, so I should have let it rest. Okay, important part of the recipe. Let your dough rest. King Arthur knows what they're doing, and I don't. Never claim to, but here we go. Okay. This is almost a 10 inch round. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and just put this on the other one. And when I have everything stacked, I'll cut it. I'll cut the excess off. Okay, see if I can do this without stretching it and putting a hole in it. Too late, I already did both of those things. So here we go. Oh no, this is just everywhere. Okay. Okay, we're making a mess. That's okay. It's gonna taste fine. It may not look like a star and it may not look pretty, but it's gonna be okay. All right, I'm gonna microwave more Nutella to go on this one and then we'll roll out everything else. Okay. This video is going to be so chaotic. You know what? I'm going to roll out this next one. Wow, that one is... Which one's bigger? This one. Yeah, I want. yeah, okay. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know what we're doing here. We're just going to... Just go. This one is not going to be nice and round like the other one. It's okay. I've already proven that I'm going to stretch it out and put my finger through it when I'm moving it around anyway. So just doing the best we can here. Okay. We're going to put some more flour here. All right. Put my finger uh, right in the Nutella. That's awesome. That's okay. All right, here we go. More hot Nutella right in the middle of that. And spread it out as nice as I can without ripping the dough more than it already is. <laughs> Cinnamon sugar definitely would be easier, I think. I have thrown out the directions at this point in the game and I'm just 
in it with my whole heart. <laughs> That's all you can do. Wow, this is a mess. I it's definitely a mess. Okay. Here we go. Just gonna lift and layer and then put my hole through it again, my finger through it again. That's okay. Doesn't matter. All right, let's get this one rolled out and then I'll get that covered in Nutella and then I'm gonna let it sit for a minute. And I'm going to try to decompress a little, de-stress because this kitchen is not about stress. We are not doing that to ourselves here. All right. Here we go. Edge a little there, that's okay. All right, more Nutella. Huh. Pretty much going to use up the whole jar. That's okay. I'm just throwing that in for 30 seconds because that seems like a good number to me. I don't know what's going on anymore. What I do know is that, ouch, this stoneware bowl is hot. It's only in there for 30 seconds, but that's okay. All right, we're just going to quickly scoop this all to the middle and try to spread it out. I am flinging chocolate everywhere. It is all over the place at this point. My dough is so light and sticky that I can't really push too hard because it lumps up or rips. So I think maybe my measurements were off and that's because I was talking instead of counting and I can't really count and talk. So I think for next week's video, I'm probably just gonna measure things out ahead of time um, which always annoys me in baking videos, but now I think I understand why people do it that way. Okay, I know that is more than a fourth of an inch seam, but I'm going to go with it because I'm about done with this. Okay, here we go. How many holes am I going to put in it this time? I don't know. A lot because it's sticking. Ugh. redo. It stuck. And then it ripped. And now it's sticking everywhere. Okay. We are going to try this again. I'm sticking my whole hand in the flour at this point because oof. You know, a lot of people don't have these struggles when they bake. But a lot of people do. I don't usually struggle like this. I'm not a professional baker, but it's definitely a hobby and I've been doing it a while. Um, I think because I added the stress of doing a video that might have added to the chaos a little. And that's okay. You learn from it. This dough is super thin. I struggle with that. Okay. 
Fingers crossed. Let's see if I can get it off of the sheet without it sticking. I did, yay. Okay. We are gonna go <laughs> like so. Once it gets on there, it just kind of sticks. Okay. I'm gonna clean up and then we'll come back to it for the next steps. Okay, we're gonna make the star. Now, if yours is a nice, perfect circle, congratulations, mine is not. So for your 10 inch round circle of dough, you wanna put a two and a half to three inch cutter in the middle. I have this one, it's not quite two and a half, but it's close enough. And then you cut all through your dough. Both sides here and then the top and the bottoms and then we'll do it the other way so you're supposed to do this into 16 equal strips again we have I have told you that equal is not something I am particularly good at so here we go Trying to make sure that I get this cut all the way through without cutting through my baking paper. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute, was that right? Now I gotta look at the picture. <laughs> yes, okay, that was correct. So I cut it in the middle middle again and then this one because we have to twist these legs together and that will make the star and at this point in the game I'm just doing the best that I can I'm gonna flip the uh, pan here. I probably should have used a circle pan. The problem is that we have smaller ovens at this house than we did at our old house. So I think my circle oven, uh, my circle pan doesn't fit very well in the oven. It kind of um, has to rest on the back so it's tilted some. So I don't ever use it. Okay. Okay, here comes the fun part if you are using cinnamon sugar as a filling and the messy part if you are like me and went totally off script. Okay, so now I just pick up two strips. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, twist them away from each other two times. All right, so one, two, oh my gosh, one, two, and then you have to pinch the ends together, um, like so. <laughs> it's not supposed to look like that. That's okay. All right, let's do it again. Let's just, at this point, we are just getting it done. So there's one, two, three, four, and then inch them together. Um, and I forgot to trim the excess off, so this is just how this is gonna be. And that's okay, because it's gonna taste good. I'm standing by that. That's gonna be, that's gonna be what I'm gonna say on my deathbed. It didn't look good, but it tasted great. <laughs> It's okay. It's, it's uh, I don't know if anybody is familiar with the artist, um, Andrea Nelson on TikTok, but she's all about like low stress um, art. And granted it's a lot of times it's art for kids, but I'm all about the no stress philosophy 
And if you enjoy doing something, you don't necessarily have to be good at it. You can still do something even if you're not good at it. I am clearly not good at following directions um, or making things even, but here I am doing my best. And that's all we can do on any day is just do our best. This is ugly. <laughs> well, this is absolutely a recipe that I would try again. Um, not anytime soon, but there you go. All right. There is my Nutella star. It's not a cinnamon star, but it's a Nutella star. So we want to cover this and we want to let it rest and proof until it gets puffy, which the um, recipe says should be about 45 minutes. So we'll check back in. Because of my iffy yeast, I'm anticipating no change, but we'll see. Maybe I'll be surprised. Okay, it's been 45 minutes. Let's see what's up. Okay, it got a little puffy, but the ends stayed together, so that's great. We're gonna do an egg wash, which I didn't prepare. So I need, actually, I'm just gonna do a milk wash on it. That's faster and easier, and it's just as fine. So, let's bowl here. Quick milk wash, because, you know, milk and chocolate makes sense in my brain. Doesn't take much. Pastry brush. I remember before the silicone baking implements were a thing and all we had were the like the actual bristle brush ones. It was so gross. You would always have to inspect it before you used it to make sure that the bristles weren't coming undone. Love how far kitchen tools have come. You know, I used to bake with my grandmother. My grandma Alice loved to bake. And every time we were over at her house, we were making cookies or bread or cookie bars. Oh my gosh, she made the most amazing desserts. Always, always, always. We'll treasure those memories. I delivered a box of cookies to my grandparents for Christmas. It's nice to be able to bake for her for a change. So. All right. That's mostly got it. It looks soupy, it, it is what it is. I don't, at this point of the baking process, I'm done, <laughs> I'd like to get on with it. So we're gonna pop this into a 400 degree oven, I think. Let me double check that. I don't remember things very well. 400 degrees, 12 to 15 minutes. And we'll see how this turns out. Fingers crossed. Okay, we're back. You missed the magical reveal of me pulling this out of the oven because the camera battery was dead, but here we go. It got a little brown. It needs to be 200 degrees in the center. Mine is, obviously. That's okay. All right, I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to cut off a really, <laughs> wow, it smells good. It may not look like the picture, but it definitely smells good. And um, I think it's going to be tasty. Uh, it's a little messy. but it's very hot. It's kind of falling apart. 
So our first bake was a fail. I mean, not if it tastes good, right? Not if it tastes good. I don't, personally, this is kind of cinnamon roll-ish, kind of ooey and gooey. So if you go with something that's not cinnamon sugar, something that's not like a dry filling, be prepared for this to not work out. Uh, let's see here. I want some of the... Okay, I'm going to try not to burn myself here. Is this sweet bread? The Nutella is good. I like it. It's a good combination. The crust is maybe a little crispier than I would like. But this is pretty good. Okay. Okay, cinnamon star bread from King Arthur Baking. It gets a thumbs up. Would I make this all the time? No. No, but if I wanted something super pretty, I probably still wouldn't make this based on how it looks when I made it. <laughs> but hopefully you'll have better luck. So if you enjoyed my kitchen fail today, I hope that you hit the subscribe button for potentially more kitchen fails, but hopefully more kitchen successes. And come along with me on the 2024 Baking Challenge. See you next time. No, but really, this is, this is tasty. Mm. I've posted the link to this recipe and King Arthur's website in the comments below, as well as links to any of the ingredients or tools that I use today that I purchased online because I don't have a store close by, so I do that sometimes. And I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and join me next week when we tackle something a little easier, but something that also promises to be just as tasty. I'll see you next time.